Hello and welcome back to LP's LP's Let's Play Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Last episode, we uh, we defeated General Ina. In this episode, we're moving on to Chapter 22, Solo. Overcoming many hardships, Ike and company finally arrive in the Dane capital of Navassa. However, much to their dismay, King Ashnard is nowhere to be found. According to intelligence reports, the king is in Crimea's capital of Melior, preparing to wage war against Gallia. In addition, at least half of the Dane army, including its most elite forces, remain unharmed and at his side. The Crimean army is again forced to march. This time, however, the battlefield will be their own homeland. Eagerly awaiting their arrival is a Dane army more powerful than anything they have faced so far. This fact, coupled with Nasir's act of betrayal, has filled Ike with apprehension and disappointment. Yet it is then, when all hope seems faint, that unexpected good news arrives. It's like, it's like Gandalf coming down to the battle of, uh, oh God, <laughs> in the two towers. I, I swear I know Lord of the Rings. Uh, but chapter 22, Solo. What do we have here? Dane Keep. General Ark, sir, reinforcements have arrived from Bugnion. Reinforcements? I haven't heard anything about this. Have you, Princess Silencia? No. Not a word. Are you sure they're Begnian troops? Yes, sir, they fly Begnian's insignia. There can be no doubt of their authenticity. And the man in command is one of Begnian's most beloved heroes, General Zelgius. There's no mistaking him, sir. Allow me to meet with him first. General Zelgius? Oh, I beg your pardon. Are you General Ike? I am, and you are? I am Zelgius, Earl of Cadol. I've been dispatched from Begnion with a battalion to support your army. Your assistance is very much appreciated, but this is very unexpected. I understand your surprise. For Begnion's Imperial Senate, this decision was made with unusual haste. I imagine so. It took forever just to get the soldiers I have now. Well, there's a reason behind this expedited decision. Duke Persis has returned home. Do you mean Sepharan? Correct. Duke Persis is also senior statesman of the Imperial Senate. The Duke returned from his travels and began working immediately to settle pressing affairs of the state. First, he met with the Apostle, and they exchanged reports on both foreign and domestic matters. Then they discussed Begnion's position in relation to the current conflict and possible courses of action. In less than half a day, they brought the entire Imperial Senate into line and sent us here to you. So you're saying that Begnion has allied itself with Crimea, is that it? That's it exactly. I am at your service, General Ike. Oh, um, wow. Thank you. Now then, please tell me what you would have my men do. I've ordered to help in any way possible. Uh, you caught me off guard. I can't think of anything right now. In that case, do I have permission to make camp around the palace and rest my troops? Yes, please do. That's no problem. Thank you. Please do not hesitate to call if you have any need of us. We are at your disposal. Okay. Is that going to be a battle mechanic then, or is that just... Story. Begnian reinforcements. That was unexpected, wasn't it? It certainly was. It seems the Apostle and Sepharan did the impossible by getting them to us. All for our little army. It's hard to believe that they would go to all this trouble. Well, first we take Dane's capital, and now this? Things are looking up. You're right. Even if we don't receive help from Gallia, we may still be able to defeat Ashnard. That's true. It's like a dream. I have to disagree. Oh look, Soren is upset again. Who knew? What is it this time? If the Crimean army is not the crux of Dane's defeat, this war means nothing. What does that have to do with the arrival of these reinforcements? The battalion that just arrived is greater in numbers than the one we originally received. Not only that, but all of these soldiers are marching under Begnion's name. So? So, if these reinforcements are responsible for defeating King Dane, what do you think will happen? That achievement, the very victory itself, will belong to the Begnion Empire, not to Crimea. If that happens, Crimea will be rebuilt however Begnion sees fit, and Princess Alintia will be a mere figurehead. And then, the deeds of an unknown mercenary company will be expertly covered up. We'll receive some paltry sum of money and be swept under a rug somewhere, mark my words. Soren, you're being so rude, surely the Apostle of all people would never do such a thing. And this General Zelgius seems sincere enough to me. Come, Soren. I've heard of situations like that which you describe, but whether this is such a case, 
We've been fortunate to receive this goodwill. Must we always search for such ulterior motives? Yes, we must. Have you forgotten Nasir? It's that some sort of naive attitude that allowed him to remain undetected for so long. You people don't seem to get it. We're at war. All doubts, no matter how small, must be extinguished. If they aren't, we could well be ignoring something that will lead to our defeat or to our death. Hmm. Me. Let's take Soren's comments under consideration and discuss this at length. We meet in one hour. Oh. Is that is that the chapter? Ike, I'd like to... Maybe so. <laughs> We're going to battle with words. Okay, so now I am going to mess around with this stuff, and I'll see you on the other side. Ilyana. Oh, hello. I picked these beautiful flowers just for you. Oh. What? You don't like them? Well. Oh, good. So you do like them. It's just that, uh, no good, huh? Then what about this brooch? Isn't it fashionable? I picked it up at a quaint little curio shop I stumbled upon. Oh, well, that's no good either. Are you sure you won't take it? Well, it's nice, but... Oh, so you love it, right? Just like you love big, strong knights. Excuse me. Hmm, she's a tough one to swoon. I'll just have to pour it on even thicker. There's no way I'm going to let such a gorgeous girl slip away. Well, good luck, Gaytree. You might consider some <laughs> different tactics. I don't think that she's quite interested in your over-the-top flamboyancy, but who knows? Hey, Ike, or General Ike, wait up. Say, if there's an enemy in my way, but I don't want to kill him, what do you think I should do? Uh, is this about that stupid game again? Well, it's all your fault. You had to go and tutor Daniel, and now I've been on the losing streak. Tudor? You mean back when we were on board the ship? It was just one hint. Daniel isn't like me. He's smart. I'm the one who thought up this game, but he's the one who's getting better and better. I hardly ever win anymore. Instead of playing that game, why don't you try some real combat? Stop joking around. We're happy-go-lucky traveling merchants. We don't know anything about fighting. Give me a break. It's nice that you're having fun and all, but please, can you save your stupid game for someone who's not fighting for the life day in and day out? Well, what do you expect? Everything's war, 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 and there's no place for us. All we can do is play this game. Sorry, I'll just go lose again. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, if there's an opponent you don't want to kill, just shove him out of the way. Then you don't have to fight him. Huh? Oh, thanks. Um, you know, we are what we are, but we'll be with you till the end. I hope we can continue to be of service, all right? Yeah, thanks. Sorry for being so irritable. That's all right. I know how much stress you've been under. Hmm. Sure. Oh, and Soth, our little thiefy boy. Something on your mind? Oh, Commander Ike. Oops, I, I guess I'm supposed to call you General now, huh? Commander's fine. So, what's going on? Are you thinking about that person that you were looking for? That's all settled. Actually, no, it's not really settled. It's just, I figured that worrying about it all the time wasn't doing me any good. I turned over every rock and begged you on during my search, but it's just easier to assume that everything's going well. Somewhere. Well, as long as you're happy, I won't say a word, so what were you thinking about then? I I didn't say anything before, but Dane is my homeland. Is that so? Yeah, until a few years back, I lived in the slums of Navasa and stole for a living. So anyway, I went back to my old stomping grounds and saw some friends. The rest of the city's empty, but they're still here. They've got no other place to go, you know? And what did they have to say? Everyone was mad that Crimea had won. They said that if the king had been here, there's no way they would have been defeated. It's so weird. Until now, all they had ever done was complain about this place. I see. You know, Ashnard wasn't such a bad king, at least as far as we could see. If you were strong enough, you could rise up and become a knight one day. You could escape the filthy slums. He was the only king who ever gave us that chance, that hope. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind fighting with all of you. But still, seeing your homeland scarred and trampled like this is tough. I'm sorry. I know Crimea is suffering in the same way, but I can't change how I feel. Fascinating. I wonder if Soth will help us recruit someone in this chapter. I have to bet so. So, you're going to lead a small unit out on a survey mission? Yeah, it, that's the plan. However, though we've taken the castle, there are still pockets of Dane resistance. It's possible they may try to mount an attack and retake the palace. I want you to be in charge of the watch. 
That is, of course, not a problem. However, you're taking the princess along. Don't you think it would be safer to take more troops? Even if we split our battalion, we have enough men to handle both tasks. I'm just not used to moving around with such a large group. And for this mission, I'd like to keep the number of people involved as low as possible. It's not that I don't understand how you feel, but we will compromise. You know, for someone from Begnion, you're pretty flexible. It speeds things up considerably. To be a soldier, one must be able to be quickly adept to circumstances around him. All right. Well, I'll be back later. Take care. This is the place Nasir mentioned, Palmini Temple. I hope whatever he was trying to tell me will become clear once we get inside and look around. I still can't believe Nasir was on Dane's side. I just can't. And he let that dragon girl get away, although I'm sure he had reasons for that as well. I wonder, was it really Nasir? Although, besides my family, the only people I showed the medallion to were Titania, Princess Alencia, and Nasir. I thought I could trust him. I really did. Why? Why did he do it? Missed. Thinking about the past isn't going to help. Let's take a look at this temple. Indeed. Let's be proactive. Let's move forward. Let's... Ooh. Some characters. What did he say? The Crimean army is here. They want to investigate the temple. What should I tell them? Crawl, this ain't good. We don't know what they're after, but if they find us mercenaries who sided with Dane, they'll wipe us out. It is at the will of the goddess. Resign yourself to your fate. Accept it. Bat dumb, no one's gonna roll over and die. Dying's for sissies. So tell me, how many are there? There appears to be ten or so, including the women. Ha <laughs> ha that is good news. It is. If that's the lot of them, we can take care of this on our own. It'd be like stealing a baby from a cradle. Right, then, here's the plan. Pretend like you want to help them, then lead them inside. And listen good, you'd best not whisper a word about us being here. Or else. But, but, but I, uh, what you ask is beyond me. KFC! Don't forget, we've got all the other priests under our control. Unless you want them to meet the goddess early, do as you're told. Uh, oh dear. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Sounds like someone doesn't want to lie. He doesn't want to deceive us, and that's nice. Maybe he's the person that Soth is looking for. All right, we'd like to take a look around. Please show us each room. Uh, th th very well. Th th uh, very large room. Uh. Are you all right? Why are you shaking like that? Oh, goddess, please forgive me. It's a trap! Oh my god! Gar, ha ha ha, you did it. Please forgive me. I thought something like this might happen. I don't know how you got wind of us, but showing up in small group means you're out of luck. None of you are getting out alive. Well, we've just fought our we've just fought our way to the Dane capital. You're not even going to slow us down. Cocky, ain't ya? But who said this was gonna be a fair fight? Uh, what are you doing? Hey, bring out the others. Whoa, my giblets, that is a lot of people. <laughs> you fools are gonna be on our shields. What? Nah, you see, you ain't so useless after all. You filthy dogs, those are innocent people, you can't- Oh, mercy, please help me. Hey, if you don't want them perjury robes of yours to turn red, you'll attack these scum. If you even think about betraying us, I'll kill every one of you. Corinthians, please forgive us. We cannot allow our brothers to die. Wild. So should we kill- This cowardice will not stand. These priests are being made to fight against their will. We've got to try and save as many of them as possible. Let's go. So how do we save them? Well, let's choose units first. How many do we get? We get 11, and we end with Tanith. I am actually going to swap someone out so that we can get so thin. So Tanith, see you later, because assuredly there's going to be chests. I believe I saw a couple, and I would like to bring Toro Toro here. He's got the 22 defense that is only rivaled by Gaytree. A couple of tanky boys, a couple of generals would be nice to have, even though Toro Toro is already level 14. Compared to Gaytree's level 3, it stands to reason that Gaytree will surpass him sooner rather than later. Uh, maybe this is fine. Reposition, let's check out what we've got here. So all of these priests are 
Oh. They literally are just meat shields. They have nothing. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's take a quick gander through everyone's inventory and name. So this boy has a chest key over here, which is fine. Doesn't matter because we have Soth the Thief. They have a thief of their own. It looks like all the way to the southwest. We should probably kill that one early so that they don't come and uh, do the thing. To Tomonami, it is. Uh, the bishop is right here, and they do have a weapon. They have light magic. A couple others have, like, some healing staffs and tomes, it would seem. But this guy can actually attack us. We can probably recruit him, I'd have to imagine. Schaefer? <laughs> oh, that's a great name. Schaefer has killer axe and a killer bow. That is a little unappealing. Not gonna lie. Maybe we do want the high defense boys and they can, like, surround him. Something to consider. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Nope, it looks like that is going to be it for that. Okay, well, let's take one more look at our team here. Do we have anyone we'd like to get rid of for another night? Maybe we should get rid of, like, one of the mages, one of the sages. Who's the weakest? So this girl, Khalil, we're at 27 damage. Uh, Soren, Ileana, this, uh, ooh, she's at 21. Where is Soren? Why is Soren not on there? He's at 25. So, interesting. Well, she's using Elf Thunder, and Soren is using regular Thunder. His magic's 21 versus Khalil's 20. So they're both very much stronger than Ileana. I don't know why Ileana was up there and Soren was not. That's wild. But still, this doesn't get us any closer to uh, <laughs> to this guy, to Toro Toro, who I want to bring in. Maybe even Reese would make sense to leave behind? No. No. Um, shoot. All right, we're going to we're going to leave Khalil and bring Toro Toro. Now we reposition we got some swords, some axes over this way. So we'll send one of the generals that way. So we got magic, archer general. I'm trying to divide this up properly. Because so I'm going to split left and right, I think. At least initially, so that we can get the things in these rooms. And I think we're set here, so let's fight. Begin now. Okay, first order of business, we're going to push left so that we can deal with this thief. Soren, you are going to come kill this sword. Well, can you actually? Toro Toro. Yeah, never know. We're going to do it this way. So, Soren, you come kill this swordsman. Very nice. Thank you. And then Toro Toro can go throw their spear at the mage. I had briefly considered sending Soren after the mage and Toro Toro after the swordsman here. But. Then I realized that, of course, the mage would have a higher magic resistance, so it would probably make more sense for them to get attacked by a spear as opposed to a magic tome. So spear this boy. Excellent! Excellent! The spear will do all of the damage in one toss. And I really love Toro Toro's uh, white armor. It's pretty neat looking. Pretty clean. Pretty nifty. He uh, probably has to go through great lengths to keep it clean. Honestly, if you're going around killing people, there's assuredly going to be some amount of blood. Uh, I could be wrong. I guess I haven't killed a whole lot of people in my lifetime. I've killed a whopping zero, and I hope to keep it that way for the rest of ever. But that being said, I do understand that blood is red, and, you know, these sort of things, spillage that is, arteries spraying, uh, that, that's going to happen in battle. <laughs> uh, we have dealt with the thief. Kieran has put at to an end his short life, which is great because that was the only one. Unless reinforcements come in, we should be able to garner these chests at our leisure. Uh, so we got the mercenary, and eh, peace, mercenary. These guys are the ones that can move and attack. So Soth is at risk here. Soth is at risk, and they've got a venom something or other. Let's just get you right up in here. You can block that off, which saves Soth. And we'll just get Soth a little bit closer so that they can hopefully pick a chest next turn. Let's see what their movements are. Let's get Soth out of the way. Perfect. And now we can look towards the east. Again, another grouping of individuals here. We're going to send Gaytree this time to kill this swordsman. 
Can you do that for us, buddy? Would you would you would you be so kind? No. Yes. <laughs> With the Laguz axe, of course. You see this man is two percent Laguz, his mother's brother's uncle's grandmother went on a date with the Laguz and then somehow it like transferred over through the bloodstream and now he uh, is slightly weaker to Laguz. Uh, Laguz special weapons. HP and strength for Gaytree. I'll take that. And now we're going to get after these two guys here. So we need a couple of ranged weapons. Let's see how the longbow does. No. No, the longbow will not work. But we do have Reese. Reese has the light magic. Uh, that'll work. Do that. Excellent, Reese. Get rid of the big boy. With exactly an... Oh, the guy has a short axe. I forgot to consider that. He's going to toss that at Reese. Reese, don't catch it. It's not a frisbee! Very good. And then shine your light on him once more. Terminating his life. Just as God intended. Now, we have Rolf who can come over and use their longbow on the remaining... Uh, Axe boy. But I need to figure out if we have someone else who can get over there. Is Oscar... Oscar is not capable. Oscar does not have a ranged weapon, so it seems that Rolf is going to be our only hope in uh, doing any sort of damage to that guy. Shoot. Really wish we could get closer because he might have been able to do... Nah, that would be 24, so 8 more damage. Yeah, he even then still wouldn't be able to kill it, but whatever. We'll get it started and then he'll probably get assaulted next turn. It's fine. Oh. Oh. Well, how about that? That was special. It still didn't kill the fella, but but that was that was pretty neat. <laughs> I quite enjoyed that. Uh, at the very least, actually, we can we can spare Rolf. We can block him off, can't we? We just get the right amount of people over here in the right places. Just like just like so. Protect our little Archie boy. Boom! There we go. Enemy phase. The first one. Uh, the axe boy leaves. He says, see you later. I'm not dealing with any of that. And then we have a mercenary swordsman come after axe boy who, who kills him right away. Good job, Kieran. Very good job. In the clearing condition, uh, I think I already mentioned this, but just to reiterate, is defeat the boss. So we don't even have to do anything over here. That was weird. Just like hovered on that for a moment. You crave the battle with the thief? No. The thief would do four damage. The thief would die. <laughs> uh, okay. Boyd? Oh, we gotta go around these people. I hate it. Oh, please don't make me kill you, priest. Uh, we're gonna wait right here. We can shove him. That's right. I should have. I should have shoved. It's fine. It's fine. We'll bring you over hither. Um, stick you in there so that you don't get killed. And perfect. And I think that's probably enough to deal with these guys, right? Like, who do you? You have silence? A staff that prevents enemies from using magic. Man, it's fine. And so we, what, we got Soren, Toro Toro, and Kirin coming in here. And yeah, they're going to deal with that just fine. Boyd, you can come back this way and battle this guy. Just show him what for it means to be super sand lesbian. Show him how to use an axe. You got a silver one. It's expensive. It requires a strong grade and axe wielding manship. You see, bro bro Broid, <laughs> the broiler Boyd has been studying. He is now S rank weapon, and that's better than an A. Oh, it's better than an A. Okay, well, now we should shove. So you come over here, you shove that guy, get out of here! <laughs> and then, ooh, Venom Axe, that's not appealing. But everyone else, let's just be fine. Get in here and we will kill them! Potentially, z -Hark, how would you do? Not so hot, not so hot. Okay, what about Gaytree? Is your, is your lance a little bit better for this purpose? Uh, not so much, not so much. Great. Well, what about... What about... Yeah. What, about, what if we start the arch off here? Uh, that would be close. I'm going to end with Rolf, so let's start with... Ike. 
going over to the left. Kill this guy, or at least maim him. He's going to do no damage back, so that's fine. And he'll live to survive another day, and it's whatever. It's, it doesn't matter. Uh, then we can send Z-Hark up to fight back-to-back -back with Ike. It's like, oh, it's like one of those old cop movies. Except instead of wielding pistols, they're wielding swords. It's excellent. This is, this is like friggin' crimi of ice. <laughs> okay, and now Rolf can come finish that guy. This here Lancey boy. He could even do this one, too. Which one do you want to kill? Which one do you want to kill? Let's kill this one. Cool. It'll be done. One and done. One hit. And then we will see if we can send Oscar up and away around that bend. I'm not super optimistic that he'll be able to get far, but it's fine. Hey! Rolf leveled up to two. Getting one defense. Okay, I was hoping for some strength. But perhaps not. All right. Oscar can come around the bend ever so slightly, which is perfect. And Gaytree cannot quite make it up there. He'll stand on the stairs. It's fine. We really don't even need to send those people up there. Now that I think about it, like, there's only a couple of enemies, and they're going to be dealt with pretty quickly here. Someone like Gaytree, I don't think, is even going to get an opportunity to get involved. So on the very next turn, I will probably remove him. Oh, man, we can't shove that dude now. Golly gee, Williker. And now it's a Venom bow, but it didn't do any damage. Does that mean we're still Venomized? I hope not. I don't know. Boy just dodged some sort of long-distance magic and gained a similar experience point. Curious to see what uh, what that magic was. It looked to be electric in nature. And I haven't... I don't think I've seen one of those. I've seen, like, Meteor for the fire one, and then I've seen... Oh, gosh, what was it? Was it Tempest or something? What kind of axe is that? Is that Venom? It is Venom, son of a lorf. Don't touch me! No! I've been poisoned! How could you do this to me? My boy Boyd is just over here hanging out with his big fur scarf. He's very cold. He doesn't need to be diseased any further. And certainly his brother Oscar does not as well. So don't you go touching him with that axe! Perfect. He didn't touch him. Oscar's still offended and pokes him twice like, hey, back off. <laughs> Keep your poison away, man! Levels up to six. Uh, skill and defense. Very good. His strength is actually the same as his brother Rolf. I was just lamenting Rolf's low strength level, and it would seem that it's not even all that bad. Ooh. Ooh, reinforcements. Okay, and a Laguz? What the heck's going on here? No poison. Stop being poisoned. So Kieran was poisoned, even though it didn't do any damage. The Feral one. Not, no, no relation to Will. Either of them. Okay. So can we shove? No, we can't. So we gotta like move back and let them come out so that we can get up here and then shove it again. Ugh. That's really inconvenient. Okay, well you get out over here. And you get over here. And we're gonna leave Tanky Boy right here so that they can't like get out and come kill Soth. And I think that's area is set now, so let's consider this. Consider this. Uh, Ike, dispose of this boy. Please and thank you. Got a short spear. Would be nice if they would drop it. We need more uh, long distance lance weapons. Short spears and spears are much better than javelins. And I need more. So that way is clear. We've got four enemies left to deal with here. We've got just about enough people too. So what do we do here? We can go with him. Can you come around here? You can. Perfect. And use the Iron Blade. What about the Armor Slayer? Iron Blade. Steel Sword. Use the Steel Sword. They all have 25 critical. If you could do a critical on the first turn, that'd be great. Otherwise, you run the risk of being poisoned. Well, he didn't get poisoned. He did a critical on the second turn. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> uh, all's well that ends well. Perfect. I also should have considered his... HP, but if we can dispose of all the enemies here on this turn, it'll it'll be largely inconsequential. 
So let's just hope that that is the case. We got a chest key. Perfect. That's right. We only have two of them, if I am correct. Yes. So we still need to bring Soth over here, but we can at least make some amount of progress in that way. Uh, let's bring up the Healy boy to cast their light magic on the soldier. Just light him to death. Is that a critical? That looks pretty flamboyant. It's got to be a clear critical. <laughs> Either which way, it doesn't matter because they, they were going to die. The soldier, that is. So, that's been taken care of, which frees the path for our tanky boy here to not quite be able to make it up there. Goodness me. Okay, well, we can get Rolf and Oscar involved, but it's still not enough. It's not enough for the Laguz, at least. Is it enough to kill... It is enough to kill this guy. So we'll bow it off together. Do a critical. Do a critical. That would be cool. Just do a critical, Rolf. Yes? No? Maybe? Eh. No. I don't know. He didn't. But he didn't take any damage either, so it's cool. Whatever. <laughs> uh, I, I, I still don't completely understand the auras that appear below them. I know it has something to do sometimes with, like, their skills. I don't know. Provokes enemies into attacking first. Is that what we did? I don't think we would want that. I don't know. Either which way, I hope we can kill this little feral one here. No. No. Oh, how heinous. Oh, that's really disappointing. Why, Oscar? Why can only poke once? Oscar, why? Oscar, why? You're getting scratched on the backside. You should have poked multiple times. You still would have been scratched, but at least this feline would have been closer to death. Uh, Gaytree cannot really come and do much because Oscar doesn't even have a weapon. Yeah, neither of them have a long distance weapon. Otherwise, he would toss it over at the one, but whatever. Um, Ptolemini. Don't want to attack Ptolemini. So let's just... Eh, it, it would attack Ptolemini. Let's get on the footsteps here with our boy Boyd. And tell Soth to wait and we'll hang out. Let's see what happens. Archer comes slowly out. That gives us room to kill them, though, and then shove the person. This is good. Oh, no, no, he's got a spear. Do it again. No, okay, it's fine. <laughs> Maybe we'll give Soth that kill. Long distance magic goes after Oscar this time. Also misses. It seems that the brothers, Oscar and Boyd, that is, ate their Wheaties this morning. They are they are dodging attacks from magic left and right. And again, the aura for Rolf. Not sure what that means. He's, he's provoking them into attacking first. They were always going to attack first. They attacked him. I don't know. Swordsman comes after Toro Neo, doing a critical. Wow. Which fell flat. <laughs> That's what I think about your critical, boy. Well done. See, that's why we like the tanky weapons, or the tanky units, because even in the face of a critical, they take no damage. All right, people are still suffering from poison, which is no bueno. A lot of people are suffering from poison, actually. Goodness. Three. Three people. So we've got a few more enemies up here. Uh, we gotta dispose of this dude in bolting, but I am afraid that if I go up there and, like, use the tomahawk to kill him, which will easily happen, right? I'm afraid that this guy will then attack me, and we will one-hit him. I want to recruit him, so maybe, maybe I wait till we can get Ike over there? I'll just work Ike that way now. He's not doing anything. Because this, this, this kitty boy is gonna get killed real quick here. Ooh. Oh, I don't think... No, Steel Bow won't do it. But let's let's do the poke one more time, Oscar, since you are limited to one poke. This will free up your younger brother into an opportunity to gain some more experience points, which is great. It took us a long time to, to get Rolf even, like, usable, and we're on that same sort of journey with... Uh, oh, with... What's his name? With Soth. So we're going to have to... Uh, well, put a little bit more effort into it so that we can truly realize the fruits of our investment here. The fruits of our labor. I, I say give uh, 
Nope, critical. Give Rolf until like level 10. And he's going he's gonna to be a beast. He's going to be a beast here soon, I'm pretty sure. Because he's level 2, he already has 15 strength. Oscar is level 6 and has 15 strength. So there, you know, he's, he's right on top of him. Z-Hark, time to open some chests. What you got? A tomahawk. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Now we're going to do this right here in a way that allows us to open another chest. So you trade with him. Take the chest key. And you can't use the chest key, but Reese can come over here, and he could then trade with Gaytree, and now he can use the chest key. Perfect. Look at that. Teamwork makes the dream work. Silver bow, send it away. Don't think we have anyone capable of using that. Rolf will be closest, but even then, only a C. I think you need an A for silver weapons. So this whole thing is a bit of a mess. I guess we should probably eliminate this guy right here. With thunder, perfect. And then we're gonna have Toro Toro occupy that void and eliminate the archer behind, and then we'll send Kieran up through that to shove the innocent bystander monk, the bishop, whatever they are, the religious cleric. They uh they don't have any weapons, they're not going to hurt us, so we're just going to push them around. It's great. Ooh, we got a chest key. All right, so then Toro Toro, you come deal with that. Let's use the Silver Blade. Ooh, the hit chance is just markedly different. Let's use the sh let's use the spear. <laughs> uh, I don't want to use it because it's a good weapon and it's running low on uses already because it starts out with a maximum of 20, but it was just the best possible choice at that time. 69 experience points left for Toro Neo. Excellent. All right, Kieran, you come along then and you shove this boy. Get, wait, why can't, why, why can no shove? Why can no shove? Why can no shove? All right, well, whatever. You're going to use the arch off on this Lagoon Slayer just to get them out of there. Why, why could we not shove? Is it because he's on a horse? Is that some sort of thing? Like you can't, you can't shove people? I get it, right? Because if a horse pushed me, it'd probably like kill me. <laughs> Horses are like a thousand pounds. They're huge. They'll hurt you. I went horseback riding with my mom for Mother's Day not too long ago, earlier this year, and I got bucked off the freaking horse. Yeah, they, they gave me the horse, and they said, hey, here's here's Chocolate Nesbitt. She's super docile and the best horse ever, and it was true for the most part. The entirety of the uh, the trip, I, I didn't even have to do anything. It was great. We went through this whole little class on how to like steer a horse, how to pull back the reins and do whatever's necessary to get them to do what you need them to do. And I didn't have to do that. My horse just kind of followed the other horses and went down the path, and I just sat there and enjoyed the nice scenery until, like, the last seven minutes of the uh, the trip itself where uh, I was bucked. Yeah, my fiance Serena, her horse, she was behind. Uh, her horse bit my horse right on the booty cheek, and it freaked little Chacanico out, and I ended up on the ground. I was fine. Uh, I just got the wind knocked out of me a little bit, but... It was, it was a little scary. <laughs> Just a wee bit. All right. Well, let's use Rolf's bow on the thief because that thief is here to steal our goodies. And we don't want that. No, we definitely do not want that. So we're going to have to double team him. Unfortunately, I was hoping Rolf might whip out a critical there. No such luck. All right. Swordsman, your turn. Come stick him with the steel sword. I've always really liked uh, the swordsmen's and the assassins. Swords Masters, actually, I think. Excuse me. Swords Masters and Assassins in the Fire Emblem games that I've played. Just because of their high critical hit chance. And I've always been able to outfit them with the proper amount of killing edges. And that has not been the case this playthrough. Otherwise, I would probably like Z-Hark a lot more than I currently do. It's not to say I dislike Z-Hark, of course. It's just that he hasn't been nearly as useful as... Well, as I had hoped. <laughs> and like I said, that's largely due to the fact that I've been missing killing edges. Uh, still not close enough to go talk. You get right there, and you will be next turn. You can get up here, too, because why not? And Oscar, you can come hang out, too. Look at this. Now we got to figure out what we're doing here. Can you still not shove? Still not shove. All right, move back. Toro, Toro. Shove. Get out of there. Move. And then we're going to bring you in. Soth or Sorin and Soth. We're going to do 18. Can do 24. 
and it's super effective. All right, do 24, it's super effective for whatever reason. And I don't think that we have anyone capable of finishing that off this turn. We have Soth yet to move still, but their best weapon is Stiletto, and their attack, I think, is still less than 10. Yeah, their, their attack is 15, but their strength is less than 10, and that's what I meant. So how would that fare? It would do zero damage! Look at this. Look at this matchup. Soth, Stiletto, HP, 21, doing zero damage against the Fair One's Claw, HP, 18, doing 23. No. You kidding me? No. <laughs> He'll get killed. You stay back there. Enemy phase. Uh, the Fair One will probably attack Sorin. Rolf getting bolted. Missing again. Thankfully, that dude should have maybe one or two more uses left of that bolting. Uh, Tomahawk versus the Venom Bow. A bold choice, Archer. He's already poisoned. There was no need for that. Wow. Brutalized in a single hit. In a single hit. Nearly leveling up, too. Got to 99. Very good. You'll probably level up this next turn. Oh, that's a longbow, too. I was about to say, you'll probably level up right now because you're getting assaulted. But unfortunately, the tomahawk can only go half that distance. <laughs> that's enough to level up, though, which is great. He's already got enough, apparently. There's no need to get any more stats, the game says. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy, it is OP enough. And another longbow. Another longbow, goodness. Thankfully, we brought a few units this way. Otherwise, we'd be we'd be hard-pressed to get around everyone in order to recruit that mage. Or the bishop, excuse me, not a mage. There's a distinction to be made between mages and bishops. We're just going to have to use someone to kill them before we can talk to them. Sora nearly dies, but is able to dispose of the feral one, which is great because now that's the end of the enemies in that area, in that room, and we are free to loot it. Oop, we got some enemies down there now. Goodness gracious, they will not stop coming. I guess that makes sense with the clearing condition of defeat the boss. They're not really going to, to stop. Everyone takes their poison damage. Very good. All right, Solf, you can come and open the first chest. What do we get here? Sleep. Okay, that's what this dude has, isn't it? No, he's got silence. Someone has sleep. I think it might have been in the last map. Uh, so we got to deal with these. We're all kind of hurting too, which is not good. Except for Toro Toro. Toro Toro's doing all right. So what if you come poke the feral one? Uh, silver blade. Nah, use the spear. Use the spear on the feral one. It won't kill him, but it's got a a better chance of hitting and it'll do a good enough amount of damage that we can probably kill him with Sorin and then hopefully we can kill the uh, the axe boy with Kirin let's see Kirin can you do the thing you can do the thing let's use the killer axe it's got a slightly better chance for me just the whole one-third chance for a critical that's really what uh, what sets it apart please critical yes he gets a critical excellent doesn't even have to get poisoned again. Perfect. And then this gives us an opportunity to send in good old Soth to finish off. You know what? Yeah, you can go right there. Soren. I keep getting Soren and Soth confused. I apologize to both of you. Uh, yeah, I'll use Thunder. We have less uses of Thunder, but it's cheaper. It's weaker. We can replace it. Perfect. All right, now that feline is disposed of. That is all the enemies, again, on this western half. Uh, we still have everyone over here to deal with, so we can move them down to get ready for staging to go up the main chamber. Perfect. I wonder if there's a reward for uh, keeping all of these priests alive. We haven't killed or attacked any of them, and we'll continue to refrain from doing such. But I wonder if it's even... Like beneficial at all, right? Because I have no idea. All right, you're going to have to use physic on someone. Zhar, eh, everyone, everyone needs freaking healing. These poison weapons are really quite lame. Mmm. 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 <laughs> oh. Lots of death everywhere. All right. Well, I think that Boyd is probably our most important unit. He's our strongest unit. 
And he's also at the forefront of our little siege here in the hallway, so we'll heal him. Okay, let's continue the turn. All right, so I want to have Ike speak to Tomonami, so I guess I'm going to have to eliminate the soldier first. Let's send Oscar to dispose of the soldier. No, Oscar can't do it. Gosh darn it, Oscar. Well, what about Void? Void can do it in a single hit. Wait, did I read that improperly? Could Oscar have done it? Let me double check real quick just to make sure. No. No, he maxes at 24 damage. That's incredible. Because you got his brother here, Boyd, doing 35 in one fell swoop. Whoop, whoop. There it is. Well done. And look at the carpet. Look at the tile. It's beautiful. We are fighting in a glorious place of special magnificence. Really. It is too bad we are desecrating it with the deaths of all of these innocent people. We can't even talk to this dude. What? We can't talk to Tomonomi? Maybe that's who Soth is looking for. It did mention, or rather, Soth did mention at the beginning of this chapter uh, something about looking for their person and they can't find them and they're certain, whatever. It's got to be this person. So hopefully they do not come and start attacking us, otherwise we will be forced to kill them. <laughs> but I think I think we'll get a chance to recruit them with Soth. As for now, I guess we'll dispose of the archer. And then Oscar can kind of just hang out. We don't really have any other avenues of advancement up this, uh, this center path right now. Not with Tomonomi still staying there. And Oscar doesn't have a ranged weapon, so he can't, like, attack the sage beyond him. Although, although we could, we could do some shoving, right? Could you get this priest out of the way? No. No priesty movie. Okay, well, you can, I guess, just hang out right here. And enemy phase begins. That's got to be the last of their boltings. Thankfully, it missed, too. Gaytree didn't have very much health. He's going to have even less now because he's getting poisoned, right? No? Okay, good. I just expect, expect everyone to be poisoned. Kieran recovered. He's over his poison. Boyd is not yet. And neither is Toro Neo. It's fine. He should be over here soon. Soth needs to get around here. Um, Soren, can you push someone? <laughs> uh, even if he pushed him, it wouldn't be good enough. Huh. Well, let's do it anyways. Actually, hey now. Who now? He has a chest key. Yeah, I just push him. It's fine. Shove. And then Toroneo. Oh no! Toroneo! I was going to have Toroneo come shove the priest too so that Soth could get a chest, but we're going to have to wait a whole nother freaking turn for that. Great. All right, I guess Toroneo, you can start moving towards the center where everyone else is. I'm going to keep Kieran over here just in case any more enemies spawn over here. I'd rather not be just Soren and Soth, especially with Soren freaking dying. Yeah, not not ideal. And I guess that's pretty much all we can do, right? I don't really... I, mm, I'd like to accomplish more on my turn, but I don't think there is... Well, we can do some shoving. How about that? Ike, why don't you shove this priest right here? Get out of the way, dude! What are you doing? And then, Boyd, you can come over here. Use the Silver Axe. Again, one hit killing everything in your path. It's incredible. I mean, I'm probably not doing the rest of the units any favors by continuously relying upon upon Void. <laughs> but hey, if we have a freaking stud unit like this, I'd be a fool to not use them. And that's assuredly going to draw the attention of a lot of these individuals. What about Oscar? Can you talk to him? No, it's probably so. Oscar is doing okay, too. Uh, come over here. You just stage right there. It's fine. And Gaytree, do you have a Kool-Aid? I really hope you have a Kool-Aid. Items. Vulnerary. Yes, you do. Drink the Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. Does it feel great? It's going to send you through a wall. And then Reese, you can come up as well. We'll just kind of move that direction without killing the priests, of course. Oh, no. No. Why are you attacking Gaytree? Tumanami? Goodness gracious, and you look like Reese. Good thing Gaytree doesn't have a ranged weapon. Otherwise, you would have been toast. As expected, 
The enemy units start marching on us. Uh, Venom bow, not great. He was just about to get over his poison, and that probably reset the timer. Although I don't know for certain that that's a thing. I don't know for certain. We'll see, because if he was to get over it, it was probably going to be at this very next turn. Misses the steel bow attack. He's taking an onslaught here. Okay. Perfect. Our turn. First order of business after we go through all of the different poison animations is going to be get south over here to get a chest. So you take this one. What is inside? Spirit dust. Okay, and then I guess we can leave? Uh, I wanted to keep people over there, you know, in case enemies started spawning, but I think we should be fine. We've got one more turn there. You can just stay there. Drink a cool... Ooh. Oh, we can't get over there. I was going to have him open the chest. Whatever, you can stay here, drink a Kool-Aid, get you a little bit more comfortable with your situation. Hopefully you don't get killed. And these people, I guess, can continue to move on up the middle chamber. Perfect. And let's get some things moving here. Uh, Gaytree, what can you do? What are you capable of in this exact moment? A steel lance? Nothing special. Nothing special. But if you hit, it's fine. And then maybe we can bring in uh, Rolf with the longbow to kill this dude. 16 seems like kind of a lot to ask of the longbow, though. It would have to be, obviously, two, two attacks, two hits. Oh, he's, he's been moved already. Goodness me. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, what does that mean? I guess we have to use the tomahawk, huh? We have to use the tomahawk. Oh, that's a waste of the tomahawk. Use it on this guy. Just use it on, on this guy. It's fine. We'll just take another turn entirely. I don't want to have to uh, get one use out of the tomahawk that doesn't, you know, like... I guess I'm not articulating what I'm thinking here, but... If I'm going to use the tomahawk, I want to use the tomahawk. He's going to get his own fresh body to eliminate with the tomahawk instead of someone that's already been pre-maimed. <laughs> Okay, that unfortunately stunts our movement for the, this turn, though. So we can get you guys all a little bit closer. And please do not attack Reese. All right, Toonami, please don't do it. It just would not be not be good for anyone. Torneo, you can start moving up here as well. And I think that should do it. Just Ike, right? Yep, just Ike, you stay. Okay, enemy phase. Golly gee, Williker, why are you going after Reese? What are you thinking? Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> oh, I didn't kill him. Uh, spoke too soon. Still didn't kill him. Okay, good. My goodness gracious. You have a death wish, dude. I'm going to have to take great care to get myself out of range of you, and that's not even going to be possible. No matter what, I'm going to be within your attacking range, but you're just immediate attacking range because they didn't move. They didn't move, right? We were always within their range, and they didn't come up to attack us. They only attacked us when we were directly inside their range, either next to them or one score away. So, kind of a long-winded way of saying, I'm going to get out of that <laughs> so that hopefully we don't freaking kill them. And I'm going to just to grab Soth. Soth is going to, yeah... Soth is just going to come with me. You open this chest. Nosferatu. We got some dark magic. We don't have anyone capable of using that, though. Or it's a light magic? Okay. Maybe there isn't dark magic. I don't know. What is darkness if not the absence of light, though, huh? Right? Like, that's, that's what it is, technically. Kieran, do you have... No, you do not have a Kool-Aid. It's fine. Okay. So we need to move forward a lot. We need to get out of here. Uh, okay, you come up here. Can you kill him? You can kill him or him. Kill the mage. Kill the mage. And then we will have either Ike or Boyd go through the path being opened by this mage's body. And then that will allow us to... Uh, a costly warrior, a berserker, or whatever this guy is. The warrior on the other side. 
Let's do Ike with the warrior. Perfect. One hit, one go. And then I think there's only one more enemy left. There's a ton of ton of bishops up in this little throne room area, but they're not offensive. They're good little fellas, aren't they? Yeah. Well, these two have light. I don't know. Are they going to attack us? Maybe. We'll see. But this guy here, this guy needs to be dealt with. So, Boyd, why don't you come introduce this kind fella to your tomahawk? You can play a little frisbee here in the throne room. I know it's not quite the best place for it. Please don't hit a window, all right? Ooh! Ooh, he missed. Oh, no. Please don't miss twice. <laughs> oh, I was counting on that hitting. There we go. Very good. Thankfully, as we all know, Boyd is kind of OP. So just one hit is all he needs. Now where are we at? We've got Reese, who we want to get the heck out of here. Can Reese do a thing? Can Reese just kill this? No, Reese cannot kill it. Reese can come over here, though. Uh, they're fine. And then we can get Oscar up here as well. Right there, that's good. What are you doing here at 45? That's fine. Or 40, excuse me. And I don't want to get in Toro, Toro to be in that thing's range. So we're going to wait right there. And you can stay right there. <laughs> and you can stay right there as well. Enemy phase. All right. So he's going to attack Gaytree. It's fine. Gaytree does not have a ranged weapon. He will not kill Tomonami. Ooh, seven damage. More than I expected. But it's fine. He's still at 23. We'll have to remember to get him a Kool-Aid or some other form of healing this next turn. So I, I, I don't know if these priests are bad or good. Uh, they're attacking. They didn't move to attack us, though. They're attacking us only while we're right next to them. So I'm going to avoid them as well, and I'm going to uh, try to just kill the boss on this next... Not next turn, no, because we got to get Soth over there. Goodness me. We gotta get Soth to try and talk to this bishop. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, wow. What is up with this? That's a lot. That is a lot. Oh, man. Uh, two sages, both with L wins and two feral wins. Feral wins, feral ones. It's not ideal. Not ideal with these two dudes just hanging out over here. Hmm. 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 What if you came over here? Would you be able to just kill him? You might. You very well might. But we don't want to do that just yet. I'm going to get you away. Drink a Kool-Aid. You're probably going to get got by this guy now. And Ike, you come over here. We're just going to get out of the way of these enemies. Well, gosh darn it. I didn't do very well there. <laughs> uh, you go over here. And can we get someone through? No, we can't. We'll get Toronio up here, and we are going to equip his silver blade so that he does not attack back. Let's see. Can you talk to him? No. We're going to get you up here. We're going to have you drink a Kool-Aid. Come on, z -Hark. Drink it up. It's delicious. Okay, Rolf, uh, Rolf's gonna hang out there for a minute. And then Kieran, you're probably gonna have to... Man, I don't actually have any idea what I'm about to do here. Uh, oh boy. We need to send a contingent south. We do. We need... We, this needs to be dealt with. There's no way to avoid it. Especially if I have any hope of recruiting this guy. You know what? I'm just not gonna recruit him. I'm just not gonna recruit him. I'm just gonna kill the boss. It's, we have enough magic users already, right? We have three sages and a bishop that we use with uh, varying levels of regularity. All of them pretty frequently, to be honest with you. Almost every single chapter sees all four of the magic users uh, come into contact at some point in a time. So there's really no need to have another one. Uh, keeping him alive, however, it's a good idea. Recruiting him, doesn't matter. Maybe he'll even join us at the end of the map if we keep everyone alive, right? Like, that would, that would make sense to be some sort of a reward for having done that, because 
there otherwise there would be no no incentive other than being a good person right like of course that's incentive enough usually oh boy yeah there's some problems approaching from the rear yeah yeah there's some problems approaching from the rear <laughs> Glorfindale. All right, let's see what we can do here. Um, hmm. So Ike, what if you attacked this guy? You would do 10 damage. Okay. What if you use... No, nothing. This is... Yeah, the steel sword is the best you can do. 10 damage. All right, whatever. It's fine. The guy has a 25% chance of doing 30 damage, which is not good. Bah, so you've made it this far, have you? Tell me, how many pathetic priests did you have to kill to get here? Come on, five more? They're pretty scrawny. You could probably take ten or so without breaking a sweat. Cowardly cur, time to stop hiding and fight like a man. We've actually, I'll have you know, boy, we've killed zero. Zero. Absolutely no priests have been even touched. It's not to say they haven't assaulted us at all, but they have not been touched. All right, let's throw a spear at him. Well, no, no, no. There we go. Please hit. We've got two-thirds. Two-thirds. Two out of every three opportunities will hit. <laughs> now here's a familiar face. It's one of Dane's old generals. Look, I'm a coward and you're a traitor. Let's be friends. What do you say? Yes, he hit. Excellent. Very good. I think this opens the way for Boyd to do his thing. Can you tomahawk him? No, he can't do it. Oh, my God. All right, what if we do this? What if we rescue Ike with Oscar? Skedaddle on over here. Reese, can you use some light on him? Get him down to... S there we go. He'll be down to 10. 10 HP. Hey, Robes, if I get so much as a scratch, you better get to healing. Now nah, he gonna, he gonna not heal you. He's gonna do the opposite of that. <laughs> You're gonna get killed, buddy. Okay. Okie dokie. Now it's all on you, Boyd. Fitting. Extremely fitting. Uh, Silver Axe has the best chance of hitting. It's 73. Come on, buddy. Please don't miss. Boyd? Boyd. No! Gosh darn it! <laughs> no! Dang. Okay. Okay. Shoot, what can be done here? Nothing. Nothing can be done here. My goodness gracious. Uh, you stand there. You come up here. Oh, boy. Now you go right here so that you don't get hit by his bow. Gaytree. Does Gaytree have a Kool-Aid? Gaytree ha- no, Gaytree didn't have a cool head, so you stand there. Soth, you get way back up in here, so that these feral ones don't come after you. Same thing with you, Soren. You guys kinda hide. Uh, Kieran. Does Kieran have? Kieran does not have. Why did no one have any Kool-Aids? Goodness gracious. Alright, Kieran has to move, though. Kieran's gotta go. Hopefully he doesn't get killed up here. Alright, enemy phase. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <gasps> oh, it worked, my goodness. And fitting that the bishop killed him. Gwah! I should have brought more priests. Or some babies. Yes, some babies. You think that would help you just throw a bunch of fetuses all over the place? Like we're not gonna just go around to them? What difference would it have made, man? You're insane, and I'm glad that we dealt with you. It's too bad we couldn't get Soth to try and talk to Ptolemy, Mani, but maybe maybe that wasn't even a thing anyways. I don't know. I'm just glad we got out of this without losing any units, and we didn't lose any priests either. The only time we battled the priests was when they freaking assaulted us, and we didn't even we didn't kill them. Uh, I am playing on normal difficulty, so yeah, not even not even anything crazy. Uh, Reese has to have been MVP. Yeah, I would I would agree with that, especially based on that last ending. <laughs> Man, ah, if he would have got 
critical, I would have thrown up. Thank you very much. I never imagined that we would be rescued by soldiers of an enemy nation. There was no way we'd cut down innocent priests being forced to fight against their wills. Father, we bear no ill will towards the kingdom of Dane itself. We wish only to reclaim the homeland which was unjustly taken from us. That is the reason we fight. We had no desire to invade this land. If nothing else, please believe that. I beg your pardon. May I have the favor of your name? Lindsay Riddell Crimea. I'm the sole survivor of the Crimean royal family. Oh, you. Let us give thanks that you are alive and well. And please, I beg your understanding as well. There are many Danes who do not support the king's actions. I understand. Hmm. My young general, this is for you. Huh? As thanks for saving our lives. See, we did get a thing for not killing any of them. You got the Ashira staff. What does it do? I don't know. I'll have to check the next convoy session. Now it's time to search this place. My Lord Ike, may I join you? Sure. Why not? Everyone's lending a... Ike! Ike! Where are you? Mist? I'm over here. Ike! This way, quickly! Rayson's in trouble! What? He's molting. Rayson? What is it? He's been like this from the moment he set foot in this room. He's just staring at the walls. He's gone insane. There's some magic. Do we get a cutscene? This looks like a cutscene. No, maybe not. <laughs> what is all this? Every wall has the same pattern on it. It's not just a pattern. It's an ancient language. All chants and spells and magic scrolls are written thusly. Can you read it, Soren? Some, but not all. Spells are simple, whereas this is a complex narrative. I think Prince Rayson could read it. I bet this is the same language that Leanne was speaking. It is. It's the Serene's language. Their chants are all in this language, too. So Rayson is reading what's written on the walls? It appears that way. How many people are in this room? <laughs> more, more people show up every moment. Shall we leave them be? There's a lot of writing here. This could take hours. I think that's a good idea. It looks like scratches. Is it some? Is it like, call this number for <laughs> Ike? What is it? From what I could gather, I think a person was locked in this room sometime in the past. You don't know who it was, do you? Well, I wasn't able to read enough of the writing, but I found this under the bed. Is this? Well, I think it may have belonged to whoever was imprisoned in this room. Hmm. Fascinating. What is it? I apologize. I took up much of your time. Rayson, you don't look so good. Why don't you rest for a bit? No, I'm fine. It's more important that we talk. About the owner of this feather? Was it in that room? Soren found it. Whose was it? Lilia, my older sister. The writing on the walls is hers. You have an older sister, too? Will you tell us about it? She was kidnapped 20 years ago on the night of the Serene's massacre. I, I thought that Lilia had been murdered along with my other brothers and sisters. Well, I believe that until today. Who took her? The walls say only that he was a large human. <laughs> he was huge! She probably never knew who it was. He thrust a clan treasure at her and demanded that she use her magic to revive the thing sealed inside it. He extorted her again and again, but to no avail. Lilia refused his request every time because she did not possess that power. Someone wanted to revive the Dark God. Shortly after she was brought here, Lilia fell ill and collapsed. Well, I'm not surprised. It was a terrible time. She was imprisoned in that tiny room with no view of earth or sky. Oh, that's all. <laughs> Missed. I'm sorry. I just feel so sad for Lilia. And for Raisin, too. I beg your pardon. Let me continue. A young Bjork began coming to the room to care for Lilia. She had bluish hair and blue eyes. And her heart was unusually pure for a Bjork. In time, Lilia and she came to be friends and shared a mutual trust. Lillian decided to entrust her hopes to the woman. They shared no common language, so it took some time. But eventually, the Bjork woman understood what it was Lillian wanted, which was to take the treasure in the song and flee this temple. B brother <laughs> Was there anything else written about this Bjork woman? A name, perhaps? Translated into our language, it was probably... Elena. I knew it! Mother, it was our mother! What? Are, are you sure? Our mother's name was Alina. Like me, her hair was blue, as were her eyes. 
Rayson, the object you referred to as your clan treasure was an aged bronze medallion, wasn't it? How do you know that? The medallion became my mother's keepsake. The song, too. My parents both gave their lives to protect it. Ike, you and Mr. Alina's children? Then, then Leheran's medallion is here. Uh. The medallion was stolen, probably by Dane. It can't. This is unbelievable. Can a thing like this be chance? To be honest, I don't fully understand all that's happened, but it all makes sense. It all comes together. Ah! Uh, oh! Ah! Oh, plot! It thickens. Mist. That's the song that... But the melody's a little different, isn't it? It's similar to the song Rayson and Leanne sang in the forest. My mother used to sing it as a lullaby. It's the song of release, the one Lilia entrusted to Elena. But I, I wore the medallion and sang that song almost every single night, and nothing ever happened. The magical effect of the song is awakened by the power of the singer. It can't be unleashed by just anyone. The true song of release can only be sung by a girl named Altina. Lilia wanted your mother to take the melody to Altina and return the medallion to its rightful place in Serene's forest. Man, we were there. We could have like, dropped it off. The story is becoming clearer and clearer. My father fled Dane to protect my mother, who was carrying the amulet. Ike, how did you know? Volk told me. He told me about my father's past and the amulet and the dark god, too. So you know everything. King Ashnard took Lilia, didn't he? That would be the final piece of the puzzle. After all, the man who found my father was the king's henchman. Ike, are you saying you know who killed Commander Grill? You never said anything about that. We all thought his murderer was unknown. Why didn't you say anything? Well, I don't know. I never felt like talking about it. He was a Dane soldier, wasn't he? Who was it? Who was the man who killed Commander Grill? Mm. Ike, tell me! Can we discuss this later? Oh, yes, y yes, of course. Up to this point, we've all been fighting for the liberation of Crimea. Even if we now add to that stopping the Dark God from being released and punishing Commander Grill's killer, our enemy remains unchanged. King Dane and his henchmen are the ones we must defeat. It's mysterious, isn't it? I mean, Rayson said the same thing earlier, but could all of this really be mere coincidence? The fall of Crimea, Ike's parents, the death of Rayson's sister, the fact that everything leads back to Dane. If true, it changes the meaning behind this war. The treatment of Lily is one thing, but the assassination of the former apostle? The framing and destruction of my nation? If it was all a part of Dane's plan to steal the medallion and the song, then I... I the reason I fight... Oh, man. That's the end of the chapter, which of course I'm going to save and it's going to load up the next chapter, but we're going to tackle that next chapter next time. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you then.